10 years. This is a, let me say something about this music. This is a very grassroots kind of thing. When we began, I went, uh, when we began playing, we found our audience and they came to us and we came to them. But, uh, and it grew gradually over a period of seven or eight years. So now we do a concert and there are a thousand people. But I can remember not so long ago, there were 10 people. And it, it came not because uh, I had massive government support or a lot of publicity. I didn't have PR people working for me. It came because people liked the music and it, more and more people came. And finally, uh, the critics became the, began coming. For the first three or four years in New York, they, could, they wouldn't even come. You so mostly use uh, uh, two or three electric organs, uh, two or three wind players and a few singers. But why do you amplify all those people? Well, for one thing, uh, there's a very in the beginning, the reason for amplifying was that if you mix together keyboards, uh, uh, electronic instruments, and acoustical instruments, then you have to amplify the acoustical instruments and mix them to make the proper balance. So, uh, originally when I began working with multi-keyboards, the only way to use three or four keyboards at once was to have electric ones, because those are the only ones we could carry around. So, the, you see, at the beginning, we had a practical problem, how to get three pianos together, or four pianos together, so we got a portable electric ones, and then in order to balance the winds, we had to put them through the mixer. Then, uh, right away, we had an amplified electronic sound, and then I said, well, this is the sound that I really, it was the sound that I really liked. And I became uh, very attached to it, and I began noticing that uh, you were able to get uh, acoustical uh, byproducts from this that you couldn't get in acoustic, in, in, uh, from acoustical instruments, you simply can't get them. We call them uh, psychoacoustical, which means that because of the kind of repetition of the music and the, it creates uh, different tones and overtones and it creates effects in the music that are not actually written down. They are the, the byproducts of the, uh, of, uh, the, uh, of the structure of the sound. But that means that it's difficult to transform this type of music to the television, for instance. Well, or, or to records, too. So we have to think of it in a somewhat uh, different way, I think. Uh, I don't know about the television. I, I'm not that conversant with the technical aspects, but I know that for making records, what we try to do is to, uh, instead of uh, the presence of the music, which is very clear in a concert, and uh, anyone who comes to a concert is uh, first struck by the uh, physical presence of the music, which is something, this is a pop aspect of it, and from that point of view, uh, we learn that from pop, that there's a physical presence of music which is, which is very, very appealing. After your first concert, you got some good reviews, but some very bad reviews as well. Mm -hmm. uh, some people were talking about kitsch and that you were cheating the audience. Uh, because they, I'm appealing to the masses or something? No, no, the music is written... Uh, the, the, the intention of the music is never... Uh, this is a big difference between, let's say, I want to make... This should be clear that uh, if I was just doing pop music, then I would be uh, more or less imitating... Uh, 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 things that are already done. I think this is what pop music does, more or less. But the difference between, let's say, entertainment music and, uh, let's say, uh, oh, concert music or classic music is that uh, when you're doing uh, concert music, you're trying to create values and things that are original and haven't been done before. And it's from this music that, finally, the styles of popular music eventually evolve. And that's, of course, turning out to be true now that uh, uh, I know that this music is influencing a lot of the heavy rock bands in Europe and in America. And it's uh, because uh, this is where in invention is taking place on this level. Of course, you have pop people who are very inventive too, and when they are, then you, they are, are have reached the level of real art, you know. And I think that's been true, uh, uh, you know, uh, of the best pop people have been able to reach a very high level of art because instead of, uh, they're not thinking about entertainment, they're thinking about actually creating the values of music. And I think that's a big difference between entertainment and, and art is that uh, one is... Uh, you know, just uh, feeding uh, the the, the uh, expectations which are already there. And for the, uh, if it's art, then you have to almost create the, uh, a whole new sensibility. How do you expect the television audience to like your music? Do you think they will appreciate it or just uh, put it off immediately? Here's what I think will happen. I think that a lot of people who never heard this kind of music before will hear it and will like it. And they'll be very surprised that they like it because they won't even know what it is. They'll say, what is this music? Is it classical music? Is it rock music? And they'll call the station and say, what is this? And they'll want to know what it is. And a lot of people, again, will listen to it and they will just say, oh, it's the same thing over and over, and they'll turn it off. 